I want to talk a little bit about um, bipolar disorder. If you remember, I did a video about um, schizophrenia, and the reason I did that video is because I was so sick of hearing people on television, radio, whatever, talking about schizophrenia, but they were using the term incorrectly. They would say, you know, the gov U.S. government has a schizophrenic approach to justice, what, but what they meant was it had a like two different personalities when it came to that issue, and that was that is a different disorder, dissociative identity disorder, which is a group of disorders called dissociative disorders. Whereas schizophrenia is the scientific term for madness or craziness. I'll try to make this video short, but uh, <clears throat> bipolar. This is in the mood disorders, okay? And by the way, I'm drinking this beautiful oatmeal stout, 5.8% alcohol from Southern Prohibition Brewing, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's called a hipster breakfast. I don't think I've ever eaten a hipster breakfast, but this is a wonderful beer. It's an A, beautiful lacing. Smells great, tastes great. Nonetheless, Mood disorders, just, you know, with any other mental disorder, there's going to be grades of it. We have your regular old depression, right? Your, your uh, what we call dystemic depression or uh, mild depression, minor depression, the common cold of mental illness. Uh, most people in their lives will have a case of this. Um, Maybe something happened, you lost your job, whatever, or you might have lost your house because you couldn't pay the note. So it would be natural, it would be expected, you'd probably be down in the dumps. Most people snap out of that without ever going to any kind of formal counseling or anything, or taking any kind of medicine. <clears throat> Just like most people catch a cold, physical illness, and they don't do anything except get over it. Might take some antihistamine or something. But anyway, uh, then we have the major depression. Now this is a little different. The person may not be down in the dumps for any particular reason. They might counsel the person and say, did you have family problems, problems with your children, or religious problems, or do you have a secret sin that you're hiding, <laughs> some moral problem? No, no, everything's fine in my life. Why are you so depressed? Why are you feeling so down? I don't know, I don't know. <clears throat> and that, when you see this kind of issue, it's probably more of a physical problem. Something to do with the brain. Chemical disorder in the brain, dopamine, serotonin, something like that. So the counseling might help, but they may need, the person with the major depression may need uh, medicine. Just like if you have uh, <clears throat> heart problems, you're going to need probably need medicine. You might even need surgery. But anyway, uh, the bipolar depression or the bipolar disorder used to be commonly called manic depression or manic depressive disorder is really a weird one and uh, it's sort of related to madness but it's a different sort it can lead to madness or it can be a madness and so what you have with the bipolar disorder and we're not talking about moodiness now we know some people they have a personality that's very moody they're get agitated very easily and then they're happy and then they're aggravated you know and down in the dumps one day and all oh, want to go to the state fair the next and seem to be in a good mood those are moody people but they go through life pretty well and um they irritate people but uh they don't get any kind of counseling or take medicine for it they just maybe a jackass but um or difficult to deal with so to speak <clears throat> but we're not talking about that we're talking about bipolar, which is much more severe. This is a person that's figuratively on a seesaw and they only have two positions, high, high or low, low, okay? There, there's no, you know, moody people are sort of like this. They're just rocking back and forth and bothering the, the hell out of everybody, right? No, the bipolar is high, high and low, low and they're scaring the hell out of everybody because, um. You've got two states, like they're in, and there's different, there's different levels of bipolar disorder, okay? But uh, they usually have two states, the mania, 
which is the mad excitement. Now, if you go to a football game, right, so most of these mental disorders, they're abnormal because of the, the context in which the people act out. If you went to a football game and a person ran a punt return back 96 yards to win the game, you'd see people jumping up and down, yay, 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 they'd be excited. You wouldn't think much of it because you're at a football game, it was exciting end of the game play, right? So it's normal. But if the person is jumping up and down screaming, yay, yay, but they're on their on their roof at 1030 in the morning for no apparent reason, or they're jumping up and down in Kmart doing this, but there's no contest going on. They're just on the, the underwear aisle. Then you would say that's very abnormal. <laughs> so that's the mad excitement. And when these people get into this mania, it might go on for days. They may not eat anything. I, I used to teach at a school with disordered students. Behavior disorder was the term they used. Did that for six years. Called it court school and later redirection center. I don't know how many people we actually redirected. But we had some that seemed to have bipolar in up. Oh, they take all kind of medicine. You got to watch it with these public schools because they, they're hot to get people on a medicine and they, they're hot to diagnose because when they diagnose with a disorder, then the student is labeled disabled to some extent and they can qualify for SSI. So the parents may be very um, enthusiastic about getting them diagnosed to get that magic money every month. And then the school is hot to get them diagnosed because they can get extra funding from the US government for disabled students. So there's a very, very bad conflict of interest there. So Chances are, if they put you under evaluation at a school for a disorder, you're going to be labeled disordered because it's to their, they think it's to their advantage, it actually destroys the school system, but it's to their monetary careerist opportunist advantage to do it, okay? We're getting back to bipolar. Um, we're talking about true bipolar disorder, not this phony stuff so schools can get crooked funding. Um, <clears throat> These people, they're, they're getting the mania, right? And I had the students that would do it. They would be excited, you know, and they couldn't eat. Like you say, it's lunchtime. They wouldn't eat. They'd just chew the food. They're not consuming anything. It's like a little chipper, a wood chipper. The hot dogs, they're not consuming. I'll say, you got to calm down. Well, of course, they couldn't calm down. And then uh, you've had case studies. There's so many case studies you can read about. Uh, we had a governor in Louisiana who was governor off and on from the 1930s to 1960s, believe it or not, but up. Uh, Earl Long, brother of Huey Long, very smart man, almost could say a genius, but very sick, troubled mentally. Um, he would be depressed to bizarre things. But uh, wife, his wife was giving a dinner party one night. Oh, he's really well-heeled women. And he comes walking down the stairs in a bathrobe, goes stand in the corner of the governor's mansion, urinating on the, on the floor in front of everybody. This is a, he, he just be in this depression. You know, he's out of his mind, like it's out of his mind. Like no normal person would do that, but he was crazy. But uh, but then, not, you know, mental health professionals never use the word crazy. Well, at least maybe at the lunchroom they do, but not in their official writings, right? But then he would get into mania. And um, Earl Long, you know, he, him and his brother, they didn't get along, Huey Long. Huey Long was making a speech one time, and he said, I've done, I've done something for every, every person in this state, Louisiana. And uh, Earl said, shouted out, you never did anything for me, Huey. He knew his brother. He recognized the brother. He said, I sure did. I built the finest mental hospital in this country, right here in the state. And Earl tried to charge the stage. But um, when Earl got in this mania, he got in a bad manic state in 1960 might have been 59 60 yeah and he was just out of control he made this wild speech at the state legislature they had to pull him off the podium then he had this idea he got in a station wagon and he drove to new orleans and he bought 100 goldfish and 50 cowboy boots and he drove then he drove to mexico giving a, giving the stuff away he flew back on a plane to louisiana and had a pillowcase over his head with eye holes cut so people wouldn't recognize him when he was trying to hide. Everybody knew who he was. They tried to put him in the state mental hospital that was built, the one that his brother talked about. But um, 
he was very smart. Like I told you, even when he was out of control, he was smart. So he, you can read about that. He did a little, little legal trick to get out of prison. I mean, out of prison, not prison, but the mental hospital. And then he died later in 1960 from a heart attack. But uh, he displayed classic manic depressive or bipolar uh symptoms now you read about other people like case studies about this woman who um was taken in um to a facility and uh, her husband had called authorities she was in the in the literally she was in the living room i guess she was like 20 something 27 in the living room she had built a bonfire in the living room and she was dancing around the bonfire in a, in, a, in, a, in a skirt, you know, these straw skirts that she bought, you know, like a tourist thing that she bought in Hawaii on a trip earlier, in, you know, in her life. And um, she was j jumping around the bonfire in the living room, screaming and hollering. And of course, they put the fire out and they brought her to the mental hospital. And when they brought her into the mental hospital, that she was screaming and hollering and uh, trying to call football plays, uh, screaming at 21 three, and cursing intermittently while she was calling the football plays, screaming, cursing, doing the football plays. And um, she only seemed partially aware of her surroundings, so she had to go away for a little while. Years later, about seven years later, there was a second incident and the husband called and they brought her in because she was in her thirties now. And then she was in a depressive state she he said she hadn't communicated for like three days she was just sitting in a bedroom staring in the space didn't want to eat bathe nothing mumbling blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> talking real slow like she was in a trance <clears throat> so they took her to the hospital again trying to talk to her you know and she's just staring in the space talking in a monotone voice and seemed to be having a conversation with God about why did he take, why was her her sister allowed to die? And she was said she could see her sister's face being eaten alive with worms with one of the eyes hanging out the eye socket while she's pleading with God to um, bring her sister back. No clue where she was, no communication with anybody else. She had to have some major treatment. So that's the kind of thing we're talking about. And I'm talking about moody. We're talking about insane, bizarre behavior, okay, bipolar. Um, they're either up on the roof, you know, when the, the mother drives home, mama, mama, you know, ah, the, the x-rays are coming through, the x-rays are coming through, and uh, they got a shotgun in their hand and say, but I'm not going to let the police get those x-rays because all the chocolate got saved last month, and you don't know what they're talking about. And when they're in the mania, they'll they'll have these big projects. They're gonna build. They're gonna they're gonna build a charity home for uh, children from Liechtenstein, and they're gonna they're gonna do all these things. They'll just be talking. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and they're gonna do all these wonderful things. They they they're elated. They're elated. Elated, and they they might even not even. <laughs> Cause and then they'll go in, you know, they can't even talk, and they'll go into these flights of fancy, and and then they'll start to they'll go into a psychosis. They'll start to believe things when they're in their mania, and they'll you know they don't touch me, don't touch me. They'll think like one patient thought they had electricity shooting out of his hands, and he didn't want anybody to touch him because he thought he'd electrocute him. You know, this would be out, totally out of control. And then when they're in the depression, they could be trying to you know kill themselves and. You say, what's up, what's up, uh, daddy? Oh, nothing, I just have this knife, you know. You know, I could kill you while you're sleeping. And you're just terrified, you know. You, it, and there are things that are trigger them off, you know, like I have a friend, his father used to have this, his father died in the 70s, he wasn't even that old, but he said, he was really, he said it was really, really scary, you know, with his father because um, he would be in the mania and they'd do all these wild things, you know, like uh, kind of like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Time, of the Third, kind building the um, pyramid, you know, the uh, mountain in the house. But uh, he said, but the trigger was this. He said, it, uh, if his daddy put on a, if his father put on a Dean Martin record, then you better run. Cause he was slipping into that major depression. So he put on that Dean Martin record and he'd get down in that easy chair and get a cigarette out. 
and play that Dean Martin record, and then it was on. He said it was going to be a scary night in that house. And he said he was sleeping one night, and his father just opened the door, said real monotone, you know, I could kill everybody in this house while you're sleeping. He just closed the door and went off. So, it's, uh, you know, these people have to have medical treatment. They probably, uh, in a lot of cases, cannot be in society because they could just be so dangerous, you know, to themselves or others. And um, what causes uh, bipolar depression or a bipolar disorder? Hard to say. Uh, some people believe it's related to dopamine system, serotonin system, uh, chemicals that control pain, pleasure, uh, feelings of uh, satisfaction, of relaxation. Um, a common medication for bipolar disorder is lithium and lithium salts are very very strong yeah it'll it'll take the ro it'll take the seesaw and put it more of a even at an even keel but the side effects just like with the schizophrenia drugs the side effects are so harsh and terrible i mean you can just read about the side effects it would be a list pages long that the, the patient almost can't stand the side effects and the problem is they'll take the medicine, the side effects are so bad, dry mouth, impotence, whatever, just bad, bad, bad. And then they're not having the crazy thoughts or the, the wild mood swings. And they'll think, I'm cured, the medicine cured me. The medicine did not cure them. The medicine only treated the symptoms. And then they'll stop taking it. Well, you'll know if they stop taking it because they drove your car through the mall and you know they're trying to rescue all the, um, hamsters so they can send them to China and start a candy company or something. So, you know, it, or they're laying in the bed and you couldn't find them. They went, you know, hide out in the woods somewhere for days because they didn't want to live, something like that. That's the depression. So they got to take the medicine if they want to function in any kind of normal way. But then the medicine's so bad that uh, it's almost like a, a negative thing. And, and it's like the schizophrenia. Some of them, the medicine is so powerful and the side effects are so horrible that they'd almost rather be in the psychosis. So um, obviously the mental health treatment at this point, 2014, when this video is being made, is very poor. I'm sure 50 years from now, we'll look back and people will pull their hair out and say, can you imagine how horrendous the treatment was for these mental disorders in the early 21st century century um some of them get so bad off with the um deep depression when they're in the depression state they'll be they'll be in a super suicidal depressive state and they have to use electroconvulsive shock treatment the the ect therapy uh is not used too much anymore it's very controversial they used to use it all the time i mean you could go in there for anything and they're going to hit you with some voltage but um probably wouldn't have justified the big expense for the for the equipment. But the ECT, the electroconvulsive uh, treatment or therapy is effective for severe, deep suicidal depression. And for whatever reason, it snaps them out of it. Uh, we've heard about Carrie Fisher. She's dealt with this problem for years, this bipolar disorder, and she'll get crazy, you know, really crazy and uh, or really depressed and which can make them crazy. And she said that she goes there when she starts feeling the craziness coming on she go get hit with the um, shock treatment and snaps her out of it for whatever reason. So um, something to do with electricity uh, affecting the brain. So anyway, that's a quick rundown of bipolar disorder. I'm no expert on it anyway, but I used to teach psychology for many years. So in the 90s and the 2000, 2010. So I know a little bit about it just at, at that level. But uh, a lot of people don't understand it and they're very frightened of it. And it's a frightening thing. So thank you for watching this video production. I appreciate any comments about bipolar or manic depression, bipolar disorder, manic depressive disorder.